Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi, and today we're gonna to take a look at a few new beauty items. So we have the Decorte Zenwear Foundation. This is new, I purchased this from Saks, so if you're interested in that, you can purchase it there or directly from the Decorte website. We also have one of the new Bobbi Brown Brightening Blushes. So I had picked up all of the ones that were available here in the US. On Selfridges, they also have another shade, Blushed Peach, so I picked that one up. And I just wanted to share that one with you guys today. So we're gonna take a look at that. We also have the new Ritual Defeat eye products. So these are the Ash and Amber eye soots. The, the actual product itself is not new. The packaging is new. It should be a little bit easier to use. And we're gonna test out the formula for this. And then I also have the Ritual Defeat. Uh, this, this is a lab access. So you can actually you know request not really request, you can sign up so that you can be notified when they basically have like tester items that you can purchase and you know they'll request feedback and so forth, but you can kind of you know try products out in advance before they make their final launch. So these are the new Thornbite Peptide Plump Creme Lip Oils. So we're gonna talk about those as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start off with the Decorte Foundation. And this is my first time trying a decorte foundation, but you know, I typically really love Japanese makeup. A lot of it is just done so well, and a lot of their foundations tend to work really well for me. So I wanted to try this. It is made in Japan, and this is going to be, you know, kind of a new matte foundation. I picked up the shade N12. We do have one fluid ounce here. And in this case, let me just show you that this is the consistency of it. So you can see it's gonna be a thin serum, or not really a serum, but more like a thin liquid consistency. And you can spread this out very easily. You definitely get that matte coverage there. And I would say that this is a medium. You could even build this up to a full coverage foundation. And let's take a look at some application of this and a wear test while I talk about the details. So according to Decorte, this is an ultra long wear multi-proof foundation, and it's a liquid foundation with lightweight yet flawless coverage, blends smoothly into skin for a polished semi-matte finish, used after preparing skin with skincare or makeup base. And you know, as always, they recommend shaking well before use and either applying this with fingers or a foundation brush. And according to Decorte, this is a 24 hour wear time on here. It comes in 40 shades. So you definitely have just a whole variety of tones here. And I would have to say it's definitely going to give you like lightweight texture on the skin. You don't really notice it or feel it. And they also agree medium to full coverage foundation. Now, like many other foundations right now, this will have skincare ingredients in it. And if you use this, you know, on a regular basis, it's supposed to improve your skin over time. So out of all of their claims, I would have to say that to me, this is more of a true matte finish than a semi matte finish. It's not quite as much of a powder finish on the skin as something like the new Guerlain Terracotta, but I definitely get some of that powder vibe. So in the demos that you've been seeing, the very first one with the wear test, I wore that over the Surat Perfectionist Primer, which is a bit more of a mattifying primer. It really kind of subdues my sunscreen and so forth. And you can see that it does look a little little bit powdery on the skin. If you have dry skin, I would stay away from this because I do think it's going to accentuate dry spots. And you know, I felt like it looked a little bit dry at times. However, in the other demo, what I'm wearing today, I have the uh, Dior Forever Skin Veil Primer on, which is a moisturizing primer. And that one has worked really well with it. I don't notice any like dry spots or anything like that on my skin. And I definitely think that's the way to go with my skin type. Now my skin type is going to be more balanced, but it is a little bit dry right now. So I am leaning a little bit dry. So a moisturizing primer is definitely great for me. If you have balanced, oily combo skin, you know, you could probably get away with something like the Surat Perfectionist Primer or another mattifying primer and have great results 
results with this foundation. I have to say that this foundation I think is actually very impressive. The wear time on here is great. You can see that you know, in the wear test, it really held up all day. No signs of wear, you know, no breakthrough or anything like that. I think it works really well and it's 60 US dollars. So I feel like that's definitely a fair price, especially since we've been seeing so many new foundations come out with much higher price points recently. And I think this is a really great option. So let's go through a few color shade comparisons. So this is a decorte. This is it dried on my skin here. We're gonna just put a little bit right next to it so you can see you know the level oxidation change you can definitely see that it got a little bit warmer more not more yellow not really orange but it has a little bit of both of those tones more of like a warmer brown tone and so it definitely did deepen a little bit but you're going to see that with foundations and i notice it more frequently with matte finishes versus uh, satin finishes now for a comparison, this is a Sisley Sisleya La Tent foundation, and this is Zero R Vanilla. So let's put that one right next to it. And this shade is just a little bit deep for me, but I can definitely use it still, you know, just kind of sheared out. You can see that this is gonna be a little bit deeper. It's also going to be a bit warmer. This here is the Guerlain Terracotta Latent, and this is shade 0N. We're gonna put this on the other side here of it because I do think this is kind of our closest comparison both with finish and actually color. These are gonna be kind of similar, but you can see the Guerlain's gonna be a little bit more golden in tone, whereas the Decorte is just a little bit more neutral. So just something to note there. And uh, finish-wise though, I think they're gonna be similar. However, the Guerlain, is definitely going to be more of like a powder finish on the skin and the decorte isn't quite all the way there. This is the Chanel Sublimage Lessons de Tant, and this is going to be the shade BR12. So I wanted to show you this because this one is also just a little bit deeper than what I typically wear from Chanel, but you can see this is going to be cooler. It's more of a rosy tint there. And in comparison, this is the Chanel Ultra Latent in shade BD01. So this is my normal shade from Chanel. You can see that's gonna be lighter, more ivory neutral compared to all of these. It's actually um, much closer to the fresh swatch of the decorte, but as it dries down, uh, the Chanel will be slightly lighter overall than the decorte. So let's go ahead and move on to the Bobbi Brown blush. So as I mentioned, I have a video with the other shades of this, so definitely take a look at that. But let's go ahead and start off with swatching this. So these brightening blushes, I have to say I really like them. You have, you know, kind of just your, your blush in the larger swatch here. It does have a satin finish. You can see that we have a nice soft peach shade here. Let me go ahead and make that a little bit wider. We'll kind of buff out the bottom of this. And then you have a little bit of a highlighter and kind of like this bronzer contour shade. These all have a bit of sheen to them. You can see the highlighter is going to be an ivory shade and the contour is going to be a soft, a soft bronze. Now you can either, you know, use these individually, which I do find to be a little challenging because these are narrow areas, or you can mix them all together. And I'll show you that in the demo. When you mix them all together, you can see you get more of like a shimmery peach with a touch of bronze. So overall, I think they are really beautiful. Let's take a look at the demo while we talk about this one. And you can see here that on the right side of my face, I use each of the shades individually. And on the left side, I mix them all together so you can kind of see both. Now, one thing to note, this is gonna be a very light blush. So this is gonna be suitable for fair skin tones and light. But as you're getting closer to medium, it's just gonna be a little bit too light. So this is definitely not going to be one that's gonna work for everybody. I have to say though, I really like it. It's one of those ones that for me is just like something quick and easy that I can put on to give a little bit of color without too much. And it's definitely something I don't have to be careful putting on because it is so light. You know, it's kind of hard to mess that one up. So I have to say, I really like this one. I think it is a really beautiful soft peach shade. And 
yeah, I mean, this is probably gonna be one of my favorites from Bobby Brown, you know, from this set here. So I think the blushed bronze is another one. That one's gonna be more nude. Just for some quick comparisons, here's the blushed peach. This is the blushed pink. So I mean, I'm just gonna show you the swatch of these mixed together here. So here's blushed peach or pink, I'm sorry. You can see that's also gonna be light. This one actually can build up slightly deeper than the blushed peach though. Um, so just something to note there. Then we have blushed bronze and here's the blushed peach. So you can see the difference here. They actually do have some similarities because that peach is not too orange. It's not too, too peach, but this is definitely gonna be more nude. So it's much more of this shade here. Let me go ahead and swatch those that nearby. So the contour bronzer shade, you know, it's gonna be a little bit warmer in the blushed peach than the blush bronze compact overall, which has a touch of rosiness. But you can see that, you know, there, that definitely has a similarity to it. So those are gonna be the two closest shades in the Bobbi Brown blushes. This one here is like blush burgundy. You can see it's gonna be significantly deeper. And then the blush coral is significantly deeper as well. So let me go ahead and swatch the blush coral because if you like that peachy shade, but it's just too light for you, I think the blush coral is a nice option. You can see it definitely has more pink in there. It is a, more of a true coral, but I think it's a really great option. So overall, I have to say I do really love these Bobbi Brown Brightening Blushes. They've been ones that I've been reaching for a lot. They give you a shimmer or a sheen on the skin, but not one that's sparkly. So I think it's great for this warmer weather. It's great anytime you want a little bit of a sheen, but you don't wanna be too, you don't want too much, you know, you want that subtle sheen to it. And I think that's, it's really great for that. And of course you can tone that down by going purely with the blush. Again, everything here is gonna have a bit of a satin finish. So none of them will be matte, but they are on the subtle end. So one more time, here we go. We've got the blush peach in all of the shades separately, then blushed peach mixed all together, blushed pink, blushed bronze, blushed coral. And this one here again is the blushed bronze next to the contour shade in the blushed peach. Next, let's move on to the Ritual Defeat. We'll talk about the eyeshadows first. So there's a set you can purchase on the Ritual Defeat website called the Biome Set. It comes with the three eyeshadow shades and this brush. This is a synthetic brush. You can see that, you know, it's got a great density here so you can either pat things in you can move it through the crease i actually think it's a really nice versatile brush and it works well with these products now i have tried ritual defeat eyeshadows before and i just didn't like them because they i, I purchased the shade cultist in the past which you know people say that one has a tendency to crease more than their other ones so i wanted to try them again and see you know if the other shades you know if that was accurate so they've changed the packaging and I already got rid of my old ones, but if I had known they were coming out with these, I would have saved it. Basically what they've done is they've widened it. This is about probably like twice the size of the diameter of the old one. So the old one, you could like barely get your finger in and it was taller. So once you get past that initial layer, it was really hard to dip your finger in, which is one of the recommended methods or even get a brush in, you know, just because you couldn't really determine where the placement of the product would be on the brush because you're getting it into this like kind of thin cylinder. So I didn't love the packaging on that. I thought it looked cute, but it just wasn't that functional for me. And we have a black screw top lid here and there are three shades. So let's start with swatches and then we'll talk a little bit about these while we look at some demos. So this first one, these are called the Ashen Ember Isolates. This is the shade Flora. So you can see this one here is a little crumbly for me. Um, that's how mine arrived, but my other ones didn't. However, it's an Ashen Ember Isolate. So I feel like that's gonna happen at some point and it happened to me with my other one as well. It's not really the same as an eyeshadow pan breaking because I think it's just a feature of the actual formula there. It's got a little bit more of a drier, um, ash like texture. This one here is Fauna. And 
So we've got flora and fauna. You can see these are both gonna be light shimmery shades. This first one here has more of a lavender hue to it. There's a little bit of a, it's, it leans a little more pink than blue, but it's a pretty, it's pretty close to being right in the middle between them. This uh, fauna shade here, or yes, the fauna shade is more of a rose champagne here. So it's definitely champagne, but there is gonna be a touch of rose. And then we also have one of the deeper shades. This is Mineralia. And this is gonna be like your deep bronzy brown here. And you can see where it's kind of built up. You get a bit more of that bronzy hint, but it's on this like deeper chocolate base. So take a look at the shimmer in these. You can see all three of these shades are shimmery. We have kind of those like whiter, more silvery sparkles in Flora and Fauna, but in the Mineralia shade, there's definitely kind of that warm bronze sparkle in there. And I think all three of these shades are really beautiful. So let's take a look at the demos and the wear test and talk a little bit about this. So Ritual Defeat, when I first bought some of their products, at that time they were only available on their own website, and this was years ago. You can now purchase some of their items at Ulta, but they're also available at like Saks, and I believe Neiman Marcus also carries some of their products and so forth. So they've really kind of grown over the years. And again, this is gonna be our new jar. We have 4.9 grams of product here. These are made in the US and they're Leaping Bunny certified cruelty free. So they have a one year shelf life. They're made without animal testing, talc, synthetic dyes, synthetic fragrances, carbon black, parabens, mineral oil, paraffin, petrolatum, PEGs, or polyethylene glycol. So it's definitely something to consider. And these are, according to them, a magically pigmented potion for smoldering one and done eye looks. And it says that they are, unlike anything else in your makeup bag, each jar is made and filled by hand to create an opulent texture between powder and cream. Every shape blends intuitively to reveal awe-inspiring dimensionality on the lid. So as I mentioned before, they recommend applying these either with your fingertips or with a dense brush, particularly their eye soot brush, which is the one that I showed you. I have to say, I really love the shades of these. I love the way they look on the eyes. They really definitely give you another dimension and you know they're easy to use. So I really love the appearance of that. However, as you can see in the wear test, there is a little bit of creasing. Now, these are not creasing nearly as badly as the Cultist shade that I had purchased the first time a couple of years ago. That one creased on me just within a matter of hours. Whereas this one, I first started noting signs of creasing around the six hour mark. And you can see by the eight hour wear test, it still wasn't that bad. So, you know, although they're not as crease proof as I would like, the colors are so beautiful on the eyes that I would purchase these again just because of that. You know, I would just, you know, you're going in knowing that maybe you're not gonna get full hours of wear without creasing, but I'd say you've got between five and six hours of crease-proof wearability here. So I think the main draw for these is really going to be the colors and the dimensionality they give to the eyes. So something that is just a little bit different about these, even with that deeper shade there, it's not like your traditional powder shadow where either you have like a satin or a matte or you've got some shimmer in there. There's something about the way that these pigments are arranged where you get a little bit more dimensionality just with the pigments themselves. You know, it's not like a multi-chrome. It's actually, it's way more subtle than that, but it's almost like you have, it's almost like an, a multi-chrome with the same types of shades, like with, you know, five shades that are just so close you can barely tell them apart. And I think that's what gives it a little bit of extra dimension on the eyes and it that's what makes these special. So that's my opinion on these. You know, I think they're really beautiful, but again, if you're looking for 100% crease proof, that's not gonna be these. Now for, you know, comparisons, they reminded me, you know, mostly because of the purple ballet here, but it reminded me of the Tom Ford Violet Satine and the Dior Tutu palette. So let's take a look at those. So this is the Tom Ford Violet Satiné, and this is gonna be a cream shadow. 
You know, I have to say there's something about this texture that is similar to the Ash and Ember Eye Soots. However, the Ash and Ember Eye Soots are going to be a little bit more, um, they're not powdery, but they're, they're more crumbly. So it's like a crumbly, creamy texture. And you can see here that this is actually going to be more blue based for the lighter purple. And this floral shade is actually more like a softer, shimmery version of the pinker shade in Violet Satin A. But they're definitely not going to be dupes. However, I feel like you can get a vaguely similar look on the eyes when you kind of, you know, pair them in a certain way. This here is the Tutu palette. So we're not going to swatch all of these, but let's do the three bottom shades here. And well, I guess we can go ahead and swatch all of these. <laughs> you can see here that again, not dupes, but I do feel like you can get kind of a similar look with these depending on how you layer them. So if you're taking some of these rosier shades and you're putting the more blue based purples from either the Tom Ford or the Dior on top, you know, I feel like that really, you know, can give you a similar look. So you can see that this shimmer shade here is much lighter and you know you don't have that much pigment but the tone of it is very similar to the fauna shade flora kind of closest to this one here but it's more of a mix with the blue purple here um but again none of those are going to be quite the same and then this is the tom ford metal Lust palette you can see this is definitely one of my favorites but let's take a look at these uh you know shimmery shades in here and i have to say texture wise for these they are going to be more similar to the Ash and Ember Eye Soots. But you can see here that they don't quite go with the Mineralia either. Neither of them are going to be deep enough. But you can see that they have a lot of shine and shimmer to them that, you know, it's not quite the same, but it's reminiscent. Now I did have a request to go over some of the Phytosurgeon's cream shadows with these. Texturally, these are very different. You know, these are more of a firmly pressed cream shadow. This first shade here is Starlight Symphony. We're gonna put these at the top. And you can see this is gonna be more nude than any of these. It's gonna be a bit warmer. Now, performance wise, I have to say the Phytosurgeon's, these are, if you want crease proof, this is what you should go with. <laughs> I mean, these are just gonna be more crease proof. They last all day on me. This is Magnetic Maple. This is going to be more taupe-like. You can see it's not going to quite go with these particular shades. Now, as for the multi-dimensionality, I think that they are different. You know, these are beautiful. They have different finishes in the Phytosurgeons, but they have their own beautiful, like, shimmer and sheen to them. But it's not really a conglomeration of pigments. This one here is Pewtered Pine, which actually is a bit more purpley. Uh, you can see though that it's really, you know, doesn't go with any of these. It has a bit more blue. There's actually quite a bit of red in there too, but it's also deeper. And then we also have Chilled Cherry here. So let's take a look at that one. We're gonna put that one right there. And that's gonna be the closest to the fauna, but it's gonna be more pink, at, or flora rather. Um, but yeah, I mean, the big thing is these are going to give you kind of like more of a sh either a satin sheen to your eyes, you know, like an opaque satin or, you know, depending on which finish you're using from Phytosurgeons, it could be, you know, lots of glitter and sparkle, but it's not done the same way as the Ritual Defeat, which is really more of, you know, taking like the closest pigments together and mixing them so you're seeing little bits and pieces of all of those. So it's a little, it's a different finish, um, but again, performance-wise, the Phytosurgeons is more crease-proof. They, you know, stay better on my eyes. You also don't get fallout with those where you do get it with the Ash and Ember Eye Soot because again, you have that sooty like texture there that can cause fallout. Now let's go ahead and move on to the new lip products. So these, it's a very long name, but the Thorn Bite Peptide Plump Creme Lip Oil. Now they remind me of a couple of things. Um, so the fragrance, there, there's a scent 
on these and it's a natural scent. I don't think there's any added fragrance here because they don't do added synthetic fragrances in general. Yeah, so I don't see any fragrance listed, but there are a whole bunch of different like fruit and herb extracts and so forth in here. So, you know, the scent, if you've smelled the Jones Road Miracle Balms, it's a little bit lighter in fragrance than that, but that is that scent. It's kind of that herbal, almost medicinal, you know, eucalyptus type scent. That's what I smell when I smell these. So just something to note there. So this again will not be the final packaging because this is your lab release here. And this is a creme lip oil. You can see you have a flocked, you know, sponge tip applicator. It's pretty fine. Um, so I actually think it's really easy to get the product on. This one here is called Rose Dew. We're going to put these on my hand. This one is essentially clear. You know, there's a very, very faint bit of pink there, but when you put this on, it's really just going to be clear. And then we have Rose Crush. Let's put that right next to it. Oops. This is kind of, you know, your typical like nude pink shade. This is one of my favorites. You know, this is the one that I've been wearing a lot. I've been using these for a few weeks now, so I've been testing them out a lot. And then we have Rose Bite, which is gonna be a little bit deeper. You can see, you know, there's a little bit more red in there, like a little bit of a warmer red. And then, so notice all of those have Rose in there. And then we have those with Thorn in them. So this one here is Blood Thorn. And you can see here that we're looking at kind of like this nude brown shade, really beautiful. And then we have Dark Thorn, which is what is on my lips right now. And you can see it's kind of like a crushed blackberry, but it has a little bit more purple than what a lot of like blackberry shades typically look like on the lips. So you can see there's a little bit more purple. And this is Black Thorn. So you can see this will also have a bit of a purple vibe on your lips, but it's like more of that grayish purple. Uh, it technically is black, but the way it reacts with my lips, you know, makes it just a little bit more of a deeper purple, purple gray kind of look. So let's take a look at the lip swatches and talk about these. Now, again, this is not going to be the permanent packaging. This is a testing package, but right now we have 10 milliliters of product here. We have a one year shelf life and these are going to be Leaping Bunny certified, cruelty free, just like before, and they're made in the US. I have to say that the applicator for this, they it goes on nicely. This is gonna be a small applicator, so you're not getting a lot of product on your lips, but that's actually a really good thing with these. So again, these are kind of a creme lip oil. They remind me texturally of the new RMS lip lights, which I really love. It's kind of more like a melted lip balm versus a lip oil, in my opinion. These are gonna be a little bit thinner in texture than the RMS. The RMS are a little but more buttery, but they do have a very similar texture and feel on the lips. Now, one thing to note, because of this oil in this product, I find that you really wanna use sheer layers with this product, and you don't wanna put on too many layers. Honestly, one to two sheer layers is sufficient or it starts to look a little bit patchy because the pigments, you know, the way they disperse in the oil and so forth, you're going to see, you know, more product in some parts than others if you try to build this product up too much. And that's not so evident with the lighter shades, but with those deeper shades, it's definitely something that you can see. So definitely sheer and light is the way to go. Don't expect to build these up to really deep shades. Now, as for performance of these, you know, I find these to be really comfortable on the lips. I like them. Again, the fragrance is similar to the Jones Road Miracle Balm. I have to say, I don't love that. It is a natural fragrance though. So, you know, it's not bothersome per se. It's just, you know, it's not my favorite, but it's it's not an issue either. Uh, honestly, that's really kind of the only con with these is that fragrance, but it's not overpowering. And I notice it when I'm applying it, but not once it's on my lips. I don't notice any taste or anything with these and they stay comfortable on the lips. They're definitely not sticky. Again, they feel more like a melted lip balm. 
And we're looking at a wear time of two to three hours, you know, so overall though, I think that they are a really nice lip product. I can't wait to see what they do with it. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm excited to see what the final packaging on these will be like. So, you know, if you're looking for something sheer and lightweight, but moisturizing on the lips, I think this is a really nice option. So let's take a look at some of the RMS lip lights real quickly. So we're gonna look at four of the lip lights. Uh, some of the other two, they just really don't match. So the RMS lip lights, I have to say, I don't love their packaging because I'm just not a huge fan of the squeeze tube here. It's not the squeeze tube that you really apply to your lip. You want to you know, take that off. This first one here is the shade Bare. So let's put that right next to the sheer one for the um, Ritual Defeat, and that is going to be our Rose Dew shade. You can see that the RMS is gonna have a little bit more color to it, very, very soft, warm tone pink. Next, we have the shade Rumor. This is my favorite of the RMS lip lights. I wear this one a lot. This is going to be kind of your nude, rosy shade, but you can see here that it's gonna have a little bit more mauve in there. Now, finish-wise, I'm not sure how well you can see on the camera, but the finish of these is gonna be a little bit different. The RMS uh, lip lights, again, they have more of that buttery texture, so they're giving you kind of like that buttery, lush look on your lips, whereas the Ritual Defeat, because of that oil, you're getting a little bit more shine. And again, you really wanna go sheer with that, whereas the RMS can build up a bit more. This is gonna be the shade Crush. And let's put that one right here. You can see that that is kind of close to the, it's in between these two rose shades. So that is Rose Crush and Rose Bite. It's kind of in between those two. I have to say though, it is still just slightly cooler than the two of those. And then the last one I wanted to look at, this is Rhapsody. So this is kind of our more brownish shade. So let's see how that compares to this shade up here. You can see this is gonna be cooler in tone as well, just a little bit, but it's more that it's um, gonna be more subtle with a touch of mauve in there mixed with the brown, whereas the Ritual Defeat is gonna be richer. It has a little bit more red in it. Neither of them are like actually a warm shade though, I would say. They just have slightly different tones in them. So overall, I think they're both great products. And if you like the RMS lip lights, but you hate the packaging, you want something similar in texture, the Ritual Defeat might be something that you like. However, they are gonna be a little bit thinner on the lips than the RMS, which feel just a little bit more buttery and a little bit thicker in formulation. So just something to note there. Overall, I think they're both great products. And I really like them, but again, with the Ritual Defeat, because of the oil, make sure you don't use too much product or you will see patchiness and potentially even like bleeding and feathering around the lips. So I hope this was helpful and let me know what you think. Let me know if you've tried any of these and I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Please leave them down below in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you have a great day.